We know Duquesne as one of America's leading Catholic universities. We're a distinctively spiritan community of more than 10,000 students and more than 2,000 faculty and staff. High atop a bluff, but closely connected to the city around us. It hasn't always looked like this. It started in rented classrooms. Our students were poor immigrants, and so were the priests who taught them. They built a college, then a university, then a campus. Our surroundings have changed, our mission has not. We serve God by serving students. This is our legacy. What the previous dean wanted to do was tie the faculty's concern with vulnerable populations to the social justice tradition, which is so alive and so well here. So I look at what I'm trying to do and what I'm privileged to do and what the school is doing um, as a way of remembering Mr. Boganovich, a way of remembering uh, Rita McGinley, and a way of remembering all the good people that have made Duquesne and what I'm trying to do here possible. Well, from the board's perspective, the campaign is crucial. Our strategic goal is to be a preeminent Catholic institution of higher education. Over the last several years, a lot of folks in the Duquesne family have made a heroic effort to help us move up in the rankings. When Dean Mikiak and I were, were having dinner one night, we, we were talking about this, and he said, we, we have no space in Rockwell Hall for our students to gather and work on projects as a team. And out of that dinner grew the team center here at Carfang Commons. Duquesne's uh, mission, in part, is to serve underrepresented populations. I think that we are obliged to put in place uh, support services to assist them in ensuring that they do well, not only through the $1.5 million gift, but consistently every year there are additional funds that the, the, the Gussens provide to the division. So the gift has been essential in our being able to assist students with uh, tuition costs and every single semester uh, assist a lot of students in purchasing books. STEM education today is so important for a lot of different reasons. It's important for Bayer and companies like Bayer. It's our lifeline. Um, we're a science company, we do research and innovation, and we need a future workforce. But it's important for our nation, too, to be globally competitive. We need to have more people going into STEM careers and succeeding in STEM careers. We decided that we needed to partner with universities like Duquesne to start programs to keep them on track through their college education. The Bayer Scholars Model with Duquesne is such a great partnership. It really works because it mentors students, it helps keep them on track, they do uh, group projects, and um, they not only get a mentor at the university, but they get to come out to Bayer, and they get to do an internship here, and they have a mentor here, and it's worked out really well. Before the, the Keller Field House, I mean, the locker room, it was like half the size. The lockers were half the size. I mean, everything about it, you just, you wanted the new locker room. You know, the players, you know, you'd see us getting dressed before practice all cramped together, you know, like wishing for a new locker room and a new facility. So, I mean, this has just done wonders, just how nice it is. And I think uh, one of the things that it did, it really, it got everyone excited. It gives the kids a good, good tempo, a good excitement that, uh, I mean, I personally think this could be the nicest locker room in the NEC. So. You know, that even helps for recruiting purposes, everything, it's, it's been great. My husband was about, uh, I guess, 18 or 19. His father used to take him to Duquesne University basketball games. As far as the athletic center, when he found out that they needed to uh, uh, redo that, he was very happy and excited to be part of, of that program. I believe, as he believed, that it would be a quite um, uh, an asset as far as attracting basketball players who wanted not only to play basketball, but also to attend a university that would give them a great education, which Duquesne does. Father Joe Duchesne 
uh, was our fraternity chaplain and was a chaplain to the fraternity and its successor fraternity for 40 years. So it occurred to me and I called my fraternity brothers and we had a, a breakfast meeting, then another meeting, and then we coordinated it with uh, the development function here at Duquesne and we started a scholarship fund in Father Duchesne's name. And fortunately the university gave us a matching challenge and we rose to it. We received the match and now we're very pleased to report that the scholarship is over a million dollars and helping quite a few young people. When I look at the students here today and I spend a fair amount of time on campus and have a chance to interact given the activities that we have from our fraternity and coming back. These are good, solid young people, no different than we were back in the 60s. And these are people who are trying to better their lives and better their communities. So why wouldn't I invest in that? My family and I were really going through a really hard financial time and we weren't really sure exactly how we were going to pay for college in general. And having this scholarship has really allowed a burden to be lifted from all of us. I would tell Mr. Dietrich and his family, first off, a huge thank you for giving me this opportunity to receive such a great education at a lower cost. I would also tell him that his generosity and selflessness has really helped myself and other students continue to receive a quality education that will benefit me for the rest of my life. During my 23 years, I've been blessed to have a uh, husband who's earned a degree here and two children and so I feel it's important to to give back because I've received so much. In the process of our students applications we realized that in a six-year program they amass a, a good amount of debt so I felt that having my uh, my gifts directed to that endowment ensures that the money that I'm giving is going to help generations of student pharmacists in the future to be able to have the Duquesne experience. You know, when you receive letters back from the students and they tell you how much they appreciate the money that they've been given, I think you know in your heart that it makes a big difference. In 2011, I lost my father. At this time, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. So I really had to focus on her and being that my father passed away, he was our main source of income. Uh, it was very, I struggled a lot with school, with finding ways in order to get the money, the funds to go here. Sadly, she lost her fight with cancer in February and um, I was kind of left alone in, in this situation and I didn't have the money. You know, for a 20 year old who's in college, this, this is your life and that was taken away from me. So, you know, in, in some ways it's, it's given me my life back. I think that this scholarship is a wonderful scholarship and to those who keep it going and who donate, the donors, you know, they, don't, they might not realize it, but you know, I, I'm living proof that you, you change someone's life. I came to Duquesne because, primarily because my dad came here in the 70s and it's sort of a family tradition for us. I have a sister who graduated with a healthcare ethics degree from here. Um, my mom's currently in the SLAPA program, um, so it, 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 we bleed red and blue. My interest in getting involved with Young Alumni Council was really about um, my interest in being connected to the university still. You know, I, I graduated, I had such a good experience here that I wanted to be involved with it again. I wanted to find ways to get back on campus and be in those same old spots that I had been in as a student. Even though I'm not giving a lot of money, I know that my contribution in collaboration with so many others really add up to make a big difference for the community on campus and for students that need it. Um, and if, even if that small portion can make a difference in a student's life so that they can have the experiences that I had at Duquesne that have made me who I am today, um, then that's, that, that's all that matters. Good things happen here, and including at um, you know the Duquesne University Italian campus, uh, there are things happening here that that change the lives of students and guide them in a very very healthy way into their adult life. Our initial contribution to the university was really as a legacy contribution because of my father, but when we experienced what good that contribution that we had made had done here at the university. We were exposed to some of the things that the money actually made happen here. And we were so gratified by what happened, we just decided to continue 
uh, with uh, donating because we realized how beneficial it was. What's most important, I think, uh, are the things that have not changed at Duquesne. As an undergraduate, as a law student, as a graduate student, I received an excellent education. When it's part of the tradition, it, it's a goal that's always there for you. And uh, I think uh, those of us who had the benefit of a Duquesne education have that extra incentive to do our best to maintain that tradition. That attitude, those characteristics that have always been true of Duquesne, I think produce a corresponding spirit, school spirit, that continues as long as our graduates are around. This is our inheritance. It's not an object that we display and admire. It's not a gift to be squandered or neglected. It's a priceless treasure that we protect and steward and grow. It's a living, breathing family, united by a mission and guided by the Spirit. Thanks to you and thousands of others, it's ready to transform even more lives in ways our founders never imagined. This is Duquesne University. This is our legacy in action.